Jeremiah, Jeremiah, Jeremiah. Now, Jeremiah is a very important um, prophet. All the prophets are important, but Jeremiah's vision, vision extends beyond just his time. Now, this particular documentary that we have noted and we're focusing on and studying from, once again, is part of the Exposed DVD uh, series. And it's from the, a particular one, I think, Illuminati, Elanine, um, Nibiru, Planet X, 2012, 2011. It's a compilation of some of the information out there or that was out there at the time concerning um, Nibiru or Planet X, Elanine, this comet, 2012, the Mayan calendar date, December 21st, 2012. Now, there's two scriptures from the book of Jeremiah that the the producer of this documentary that the person anonymous I don't know who who I actually did this particular um documentary here who's the speaker or reader or compiler but there's two quotes from Jeremiah now Jeremiah is interesting cuz Jeremiah in some of the apocryphal um excerpts from Jeremiah it speaks about how um the ark uh, alleged that the ark was hidden by Jeremiah in who have been ark beer and have instead been trying to tunnel and dig under the Al-Aqsa um, Mosque in um, old Jerusalem in the state of uh, Israel and trying to find and there's some other documentaries concerning the lost ark and the search for the lost ark that are kind of interesting in some of their content concerning that particular prophecy or that word from the apocryphal Jeremiah. Now, in the canonical Jeremiah, or the Jeremiah in your Bibles, that which was approved to be put into what we know today as the 66 or so books of the Bible, it mentions that no longer, like no more will they make mention of the ark, that no more mention of the ark will be made. Now, some would say, but they're still talking, you know, Still, we're talking about the Ark of the Covenant. But the real um, Targum or context of the Targum um, is that no longer will the Ark be mentioned in connection with what we call the Tabot worship or the Tabot uh, Amliko or the, or the service of the Beit Israel. And in fact, even in Ethiopia, the Ark is not mentioned in the sense of its ancient usage in Ethiopia has declined over the years since the, the um, great apostasy against God and the King of Kings, i.e. the so-called uh, revolution or creeping Satanistic coup against Haile Selassie I. Now, we just want to point that out concerning the significance and some of the key references to Jeremiah's prophecy. Now, Jeremiah's prophecy in its own context, in other words, in the, in the sense of when Jeremiah prophesied and also the connection with Ethiopia is clearly demonstrated in the book of Jeremiah because no doubt if you have any knowledge of the book of Jeremiah or familiarity with the contents, you will recognize there was the Ethiopian eunuch, Eben um, Malek, who, who saved Jeremiah when Jeremiah, in other words, who rescued him, rather, when he was thrown in the pit. And there's the Ethiopian eunuch who's mentioned in um, the book of Jeremiah. And we also know the Ethiopian eunuch in the New Testament. These two eunuchs, in a sense, somewhat get confounded and some think that the one is the next. But the main thing is the Ethiopian connection. So in a lot of these Nibiru, Planet Acts, end of the world, Ark of the Covenant, everything else, Bible, they always ignore the Ethiopian testimony. And the Bible says that the stone which the builders refuse has become or becomes the head, the rosh or the ras of the corner. So there's a, there's a key part of this whole End Times, Illuminati, New World Order, End of the Age, Bible, Secret Societies, Extraterrestrial, that, that whole New Age thing concerning Ethiopia that fortunately 
or unfortunately, unfortunately for them, but perhaps fortunately for us who do study this and investigate it, because there's, there's, there's the keys and the half of the story they have not introduced into the evidence. But unfortunately for them, they are not able to fully figure out what's going on or put it together to try to thwart the plan of Jah, of God, because they don't know that half because they've already chosen to ignore that half, and that's also prophetic vis-a-vis Psalm 118 and um, the stone which the builders refuse part. Now, let us just touch right here on these quotes that the, the producer or the narrator in this documentary on uh, Nibiru and Planet X um, quotes. He quotes uh, Jeremiah chapter 25, verse 32, which says, Thus saith the Lord of hosts, Behold, evil shall go forth from nation to nation, and a great whirlwind shall be raised up from the coast of the earth. Then it goes further, and the slain of the Lord or of Yahweh or Yahweh shall be at that day from one end of the earth even to the other end of the earth. They shall not be lamented, neither gathered nor buried. They shall be dug upon a dung, excuse me, dung, which means basically shit, you know, the human beings will rot like shit on, upon the ground. Now, it goes on to speak against the shepherds, you understand, the shepherds, and this is speaking about the religious folks and the religious authorities as well when it speaks about shepherds, your preachers and pastors. In fact, we want to just make this mention. There's a documentary out there on the Internet. It hasn't gotten too many hits, but it seems like a very important contextual documentary to, to, to this, whole, this whole prophecy, this whole end times that concerns. Um, it, the name of it is uh, Jeremiah's Prophecy and Churchins. Jeremiah prophecy and churchins, in other words, the so-called religious folks on TV, prosperity pastors, deceivers, liars, vain persons whom some of y'all may actually rely on. They're not telling you the fullness of the word. They're just giving you sound bites. Now, the next portion that the author gives us is Jeremiah 42. 42 and 8. So let's turn to Jeremiah 42 and 8. Now, this present week, we're, we're still in Exodus, uh, the Torah portion reading for us in our Rastafari Sabbath and or sabbatical studies and Sabbath scrolls is number 15. Number 15. Number 15 is known in the Hebrew as um, Bo or Bewa, Boa, Bo, um, which means to come or enter. Bamarinya is known as um Gibba, Gibba, which means to come or to enter in. And we noted it in our previous lecture that that word Gibba, that word Gibba, to enter in, it's not just just anybody entering in. You know, if you study the Amharic and ancient Ethiopic context, it's always a particular type, a honorific entering in, like almost like the, the, the sense is, here comes the judge. You remember that old what that Flip Wilson show, Geraldine, and we're not promoting any of that or any of that vanity, that abomination. But in that particular show, they had this skit, which some of y'all might recall, when the judge would be coming in. Here comes the judge. Here comes the judge. It's that sense of this is coming. This is entering in a, a significant event that's connected with God or the King or God as the king, or the king of kings. And this prophecy that we are witnessing unfolding is concerning the return of the king of kings. But let's go to the, the quote, Jeremiah 40, 42 and 8. 42 and 8. Is it 42 and 8? Because we're here in 42 and 8, and we don't see it in 42 verse verse 8 right here. So let's just play 
let's just play um play play the video after you look at the scientific proof the historical proof begins to leap out at you in completely new ways a good example of this new context can be found with jeremiah a prophet from the old testament he felt compelled to warn us of something he called the destroyer and he clearly foresaw how the entire earth would suffer its wrath in jeremiah 25 32 and 48 8 we read Disasters. Okay, pause. 48 and 8. 48 and 8. 48 and 8. So let's just go to 48 and 8 right here. 48 and 8. So he's going to read those. So we're going to read it for ourselves. Something that all disciples should do. Even when we're teaching, we give a quote or a verse. Check it out for yourself. It says, and the spoiler. Here it calls it the spoiler shall come upon every city, and no city shall escape. The valley also shall perish, and the plain shall be destroyed, as the Lord hath spoken, as the Lord Yahweh, or Jah, if you please, hath spoken. Now, this is in connection, the verse before that, it says, For because thou hast trusted in thy works and in thy treasures, like in this present time, people trust with the technology, the latest technology, whether it's satellite or cell phone or Facebook or something else like that. They trust in their own works and in thy treasures, in thy treasures, how much money, you know, how much money or credit, their credit rating or score, they, they, they trust in that. It says, thou shalt also be taken. You shall be taken. You understand? On the You remember the, the classic um, uh, prophecy of the end times in Matthew, Matthew's gospel, Matthew chapter, I think it's 24, where Christ speaks about the last days shall be like the days of Noah. And it says that one shall be taken and one shall be left. I don't know about y'all, but when I was growing up, I went to a so-called Pentecostal church. And around a lot of the churches and Christians, I, I remember when ones went over that area of Scripture, that many would say, I want to be taken. They all wanted to be taken. But the real context is that the only ones who are taken are the ones who will be taken by the flood and in the flood and in the tide of ungodliness. And the ones who remain behind are the terufan or the survivors, like Bob Marley's song about we the black survivors, that the only ones who will be left behind. So that idea when one say, what do you want to do? You want to be taken or you want to be left? You know, it says two shall be working in the field, you know, two in the house will be two women here, two men there. One shall be taken and one shall be left. Most of the Christians, the churchians and the Christian are being told that they want to be the ones taken. And, and, and I don't know how many, how, many, how, how many of y'all connect with this. If y'all understand what I'm trying to say is that people believe when it says one shall be taken and one shall be left, that the one who is taken is going to be taken by the Lord, going to be taken by the Lord. But no, 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 no. You read the whole context of it. It's like the, it's, these days shall be like the days of who? Like the days of Noah. You understand? When the flood came and took them all away. You understand? The only one who remained was Noah and the seven other souls, or was, was, was the eight souls, with Noah as the head of that, new, of that new family. So here in the scripture, verse Jeremiah 48 and 7, it's interesting, the verse before the quoted verse, it says that um, this is because they trust in their works and in their treasures and in, 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 in their machines, devices, technology and in how much money they have or wealth that they have. Thou shall also be taken, that even though they're going to have works, all this technology, all the satellites, the infrared, and all of this other kind of these devices and gadgets, and though they have a lot of money, they have a good credit score or whatever like that, they're going to be taken away by the same type of a flood because the Moshiach, 
Jesus Christus, our black Lord and Savior, has said that it shall be these last days shall be like the days of Noah. Now, the connection with Noah and Jeremiah and this prophecy, whether 2012 December or sometime after that time, we're not saying that's going to all just going to happen on that day. We don't know what day it's going to happen. We know that we're in the time. We're in the season. The beginning of the season has already begun because Christ said, when you see these things, this will be the beginning you understand, the beginning of sorrows. But the, the quote, verse 7 says, and chemosh, and chemosh, 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 and chemosh. That's like the owl, the, the, what these New World Order, so-called Illuminati Freemasons, what they worship, chemosh, shall go forth into captivity. Shall go into captivity. Remember what Revelation says that he who leads into captivity, we take into captivity, he who kills with the sword, should, must be, must be killed by the sword. So, Chemosh shall go forth into captivity. This means that the New World, or so called, the so called, the whitewashed, white supremacist, um, Masonic, you know. Uh, Illuminati, whatever they want to call Satanist, Luciferian, that they're going to go into captivity, basically, with his priests and his princes and his princes, the, with the priests and the princes together, with the priests and the princes, you know what they call what they say, a prince of industry. He's a king. They say kings of industry. You understand? The priest of this industry. You understand? And we're talking about this particular Gentile world civilization once again speaking of the end of the white supremacy this present anglo-american european gentile world system as well as the end of their counterfeit christianity are all tied into these prophetic events Okay, so we go, they said we go back to the Exodus, and now here's where we are in this present week's, this week's Torah portion, we're in the Exodus. And so in order to help one, not just to better understand it, but better put it into its context, its past context, the present context, as well as the future context of, of, of these matters, both what was was what was that which also is the signs that we're seeing currently these strange weather phenomenon patterns 